that. So when I got up this morning, our next guest was a UFC fighter. Now I'm talking to you, and she's not. But she didn't fight. She didn't even do anything. And now she's not a UFC fighter. What the hell just happened? Joining us on the hotline is, I I guess I could say, former uh, UFC fighter Leslie Smith. Leslie, how are you? I've been better. I can well imagine. Definitely, well, Leslie, I've been better. I, I, I appreciate you making time for us. Let's just sort of set things up for the audience in terms of the weigh-ins, because this is this is where everything got started, right? So you go down there. Uh, did you make weight first, or did she make weight first, or, or try to make weight first? What happened? She uh, claimed <laughs> you can't even say she tried to make weight because she stepped on the scale at nine o'clock or so this morning. I got there, I think it was around 9.30. I don't know. I didn't check the time. And I weighed in. Um, I made weight, the contracted weight. And then as soon as I stepped off, the commissioner told me that my opponent had not made weight. And so I had the option to um, I had the option to fight her uh, and get 20% of her purse. And that I needed to decide by 11 o'clock. So okay. I found out later that she she went and stepped on the scale like first thing in the morning, like nine o'clock, and and she already knew that she wasn't going to make weight and that she wasn't going to try to make weight. She only had one point seven pounds or eight or whatever it was to make, and she elected not to make any kind of an effort at all. She has like that's the worst excuse ever. Period. Problem. Ever. Like, it's disrespectful to all women, myself included, who fight and deal with the issue um, and figure out how to make weight. So I was pretty disappointed at that. And then she's super disrespectful to me that she didn't even make the effort. So that means that when I was stepping on the scale, she was already eating and drinking. And, and like, didn't even make the effort, you know? Like, I, I was there at 11 o'clock. And I saw Kevin Lee come running in, sprinting, trying to make it there, get there on time because he'd been trying the whole time. Like that, that's effort at least, you know, like that's the right thing for a fighter to do to not disrespect their opponent and, and everybody else who busts there has to make weight. <laughs> so I'm a little salty about that because I've seen her tweets and her posts where she's like, Leslie wouldn't accept the fight. We did everything that we could to make the fight happen. Well, no, you didn't. She didn't even use the full two-hour window. She wasn't even trying. I <laughs> I was thoroughly unimpressed. Okay. So she said they offered, in addition to the 20% fine, which ostensibly would go to you, that they offered an additional yeah. $5,000. Is that true? They never, no. No. She never said anything to me. Uh, and Jim West has my phone number. Jim West, part of the reason this fight happened is because Aspen Ladd came to train with me at my gym multiple times. And then her coach, boyfriend, whatever, was like, hey, how about you guys do a grappling match? And I was like, that's not how it works. Like, I'm either training with you, like we're teammates, or else we're competing against each other. So I was like, we'll fight when she gets to the UFC. And so she got to the UFC. We were supposed to fight. And, uh, yeah, no, he didn't make any kind of effort at all. And on top of all that, I heard later on that she knew the entire week that she wasn't going to make weight. She already knew it. I'd been wondering why Jim West wouldn't make eye contact with me the entire time that I was there. You know, at at least, I mean, for goodness sakes, like the guy came and trained at my home gym multiple times and uh, texted me directly, and then he wouldn't make eye contact. I was like, that's weird, and now I know why. It's because they had no intentions of making weight the entire time. Okay, so she weighed in. You made 135.4. She made 137.8. The question that everyone's going to ask is, all right, she did not make weight, and then so by definition was unprofessional in that context, and maybe that $5,000 offer didn't get your way, but as Kevin Lee did, or I should say as Edson Barboza did, he just accepted the fight anyway. Why, why did you not want to accept this fight? I would have accepted the fight. Aspen created the situation. 
she opened the door to negotiations with the USC. The contract that we signed, the um, New Jersey has their own way of doing things, and we had to sign a New Jersey contract. And in the contract, it said that I would get paid the total amount. And total amount, um, you know, by my reckoning, is show and win. So I felt like I had a negotiating advantage where the USC would have to pay me my show and win if I did not fight Aspen, that would be $31,000 more um, than as opposed to $2,400, the 20% of her $12,000 purse. And she never, like I said, none of them ever reached out to me to say a single word about this $5,000. So she's full of shit in that one. And uh, I actually have written a response to her and then deleted it and then sent it to her directly um, because I guess uh, I guess I was too fired up and I guess I don't need everybody else yeah. to see me being so fired up. Although I guess I'm doing it right now. So maybe I should have. You sound but fired no, up, but you also gave sound... Me that information. Okay, but you also sound calm and collected, if, if that matters to you. Uh, all oh, right. that does. Okay, so with Leslie, here's what I'm trying to piece together. Why not just say, I don't care where her weight is, I'm going to take the fight. The weight doesn't matter, I'm going to do it. I guess I, I understand the fighter's position, but I know the audience is, t- is saying that. Mm-hmm. So what happened is the UFC said they would give me my fight, um, show money, and my win money for me not to fight. The UFC said that they would pay me all the money if I don't fight. So, uh, that seemed like a choice to me of do I take $62,000 with no risk or do I fight her for $31,000? And remember, the $5,000 was not on the table, so it's not thirty six. And there was the $2,400, so it would have been $33,400. So, which would you do? Take $34,000? to fight somebody or take $62,000 for not fighting somebody. Okay, so that makes sense. But then why the hell did they cut you? Did they exercise? Like, how is it that you're no longer part of the roster? That, that's the part I can't understand. Because they said that since they are paying me the full amount of money, that that counts as my final bout. And they have no other contractual obligations to give me a fight again. And, uh, and so that's why I'm off. I wanted them to extend my, my whole goal in trying to open up the whole negotiation thing was to get my contract extended because this was the last fight on my contract. And I had what was clearly a very valid fear that they were not going to want to keep me on, that they had no desire to keep me on as a UFC fighter. So I tried to use the one point of leverage that I had to extend my contract to stay fighting for the UFC. And um, they decided that they would pay my, sh- my full um, money instead of giving me another chance to fight. So here's what I'm trying to figure out. Leslie Smith joins us here on the Luke Thomas Show. When they said, oh, we'll pay you the whole thing, and you're like, great. They didn't tell you if you take all this money, we're also going to exercise whatever contractual provision it is that then enables them to count that as a bout. Like, they told you that after that you took the money? Mm. No, I knew that. I knew that they wanted to um, buy me out of my contract. I was fully aware of that. Um, but here's the thing is that if I had taken, here's what my other options were, is if I had taken the fight, then I'm risking $31,000. I mean, it wasn't that much of a risk. I'm going to win the fight. Like, you know, Aspen freaking never fought anybody in any caliber, like near mine or the opponents that I've already faced. I wasn't worried about that, but it's still a risk. There's still, you know. Could have, could have pulled a Tony Ferguson on the, on the way to, to the stage and tripped over, tripped over a stinking cord. Like, you never know. It's a fight. So 
um, there was risking $31,000 for pride. That's why I would have taken that fight, purely for pride. Or I could have been like, hmm, no, um, I'm not going to do it, and let's reschedule this next fight. And then they could have just said, okay, we cut you. We can cut you at any point in time, and we're going to do that now. Hmm. So you kind of just took the poison pill in a way. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. That is, I don't think I've ever heard anything like this. Have you? No. No, I haven't. It's, I mean, this, this is a company who just said that they were not rich enough to pay all the fighters who got screwed over by Conor McGregor's outburst. They said they were not rich enough to pay all those people their win bonus. And yet, in order to get me out of the picture and not have to deal with me anymore, they're just fine with coming up with $31,000. When, when I could have just had the fight, and then they could have extended. First, I was like, hey, I want two more fights for 100000 flat. And they were like, no. And I was like, uh, okay, what about just for my current contracted amount? And they were like, no, we have no interest in renegotiating contract with you at this time. Were you talking to Sean Shelby? I was working with um, with Sam Awad was representing me, and he was having conversations with Hunter, Campbell, and Nick Maynard. Hmm. Okay. How much of this do you think is related to your activities with Project Spearhead? All of it. So I started the week off being antagonistic that I guess just my style um I had to pay for my luggage I had to pay $25 for my bags this four billion four billion dollar company is flying us out from California and they can't pay $25 for our luggage like that's ridiculous to me so I was already irritated about that and then I started looking a little bit closer at the per diem the per diem is $60 a day for me and one corner. And we came out on Tuesday the 17th, and we traveled home on the 22nd. That was the UFC determined those dates. Like, you need to be here from this time to this time. So that's um, six days, two traveling days, and then the four days in the middle. But the UFC only pays for five days. And I was like, hey, uh, I sent them an email. I was like, what's up? We have to pay for our own luggage now? I mean, I use different language. But I was like, so we have to pay for our own luggage. And um, uh, on top of that, um, you, you can't even pay for this travel day home. Like, we're, we're spending five hours in the airplane. That's not counting the two hours in the airport before that. Like, like what's, what's the deal? And uh, and then I informed them that according to California labor law, my position was that they needed to pay for those things. So they gave me $500 in a discretionary bonus. Um, I think I got that like yesterday or two days ago or something like that. And uh, so I've been antagonistic the whole time. They've been paying me money because like their contracts are ridiculous. And they're super big so that they can enforce whatever they want without and, – and this was their reaction to being held to their contracts. Hmm. So you still have Ally Aquinta and Cajun Johnson. Do you also think that they will be subject to, I don't know, similar kinds of treatment? I mean, Al was just in the main event, albeit through a little bit of uh, a weird uh, luck. But what, what do you think is the future – of the Project Spearhead efforts for the guys who are still in the UFC? Well, the thing about Project Spearhead is that everybody can sign cards so that we can find out if we're able to unionize to get the power to prevent them from taking this kind of action against everyone. Because everyone gets cut or uh, has their personal interests that do not align with the UFC's interests. And Everybody faces negative situations when those happen. It's guaranteed. Every single person, unless they retire, um, eventually gets cut or has to make a tough decision on their own. And so um, the cards are confidential. 
I'm still going to keep collecting the cards, and we are on track to have enough cards, and then I'm going to submit the cards. And uh, if they're determined to be a union, then they're going to have the option to vote in a union. And if they're determined to be independent contractors, excuse me, uh, the other one was employees. And if they're determined to be independent contractors, then, um, you know, they know that the union isn't an option, and then they're going to have to do an association. I knew, knowing that this was my last fight, that I wasn't going to very likely be an active member when that happened. Like, I, I knew, I knew uh, going into all this union stuff and the Project Spearhead stuff and before Project Spearhead that I was likely sacrificing my UFC career, but I believe that it needed to be done. And so I'm still going to do what I've been doing, which is allow the fighters to protect their interests as UFC fighters by staying silent and confidential and um, and I guess the sacrifice that I that I thought could happen, but was hoping wouldn't, has come. So this is a weird question. What are you going to do this weekend? Um, you know, my parents are coming out to this fight. I've got like, dude, this is the most people who've ever come out to a fight for me. Um. I don't know. I am uh, I'm pretty bummed about the whole thing. Well, Leslie, I'm sorry that to um, I didn't mean to distress you with the question, and I I appreciate your candor. I know it has to be a difficult time. I wish you best of luck with the Project Spearhead efforts, and um, you know, keep keep your chin up. I'm I'm confident that a woman as resourceful as you will will find something else to uh, be as equally successful in. And thank you for your time today. Thank you. All right, there she goes.